Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the worst books I read in 2021. If you've been on my channel for any length of time, you're gonna know that this bitch is very picky. There are a lot of books I do not like. But when I do like a book, I like it a lot. And so when I do my favorites of the year, I'm gonna be like, please read these. My Goodreads average rating is a 3.2. So if I give a book four or five stars, that is not happening very often for me in my life. I don't know if that is an error on my part of choosing books for myself to read. Maybe I'm just really bad at picking things. I think I have seven books today to talk about and let's just get into it. I also do wanna give a disclaimer. I know this is literally labeled worst books. So if you're coming here, you're probably looking for negativity, but I do wanna give the disclaimer. If any of these books are your favorite book, that doesn't mean they're bad. They're just bad to me. Okay, before we jump into the list, I do want to interrupt you with daytime, different outfit, lighter makeup, sponsorship, Sarah, to let you know that today's video is being sponsored by Book of the Month. If you for some reason have not heard the hype surrounding Book of the Month, it is a super popular and fast growing subscription service for readers like you. The way it works is that every month the Book of the Month team vets hundreds of books to select new and early release titles. What I personally love about Book of the Month is that they have a skip function, meaning that if there's ever a month where you're not feeling the selection or maybe you can't afford it, you can just skip it and you won't have to pay. I love subscription services like that. It just really gives you a lot of freedom. On the months you do decide to pay, the really great news is that they give amazing prices on new release hardcovers. This January, if you're interested, you can get your first box for $9.99 with the code Let's Go. Book of the Month very kindly sent me over all of their January picks. Out of these, I am personally the most excited for The Maid by Nita Prose. This is already getting a ton of buzz and I think an adaptation has been announced. People have been comparing this to a Clue-like mystery and I don't know about you, but Clue is one of my all-time favorite board games when I was a kid. So anything with that marketing is going to reel me in and I'm just really, really excited to pick it up. And I love that with Book of the Month, you can get this high quality of picks every single month. And so yeah, I'm just super excited to be reading this and hopefully you like some of this selection. And it, like I said, if you're interested, all the information will be in the description box down below on how you can get your first box for $9.99. So the first book on this list is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. Now it may upset some people to see this on this list um, because I feel TJ Klune is beloved by many. The House in the Cerulean Sea is a very good book. I actually did read that earlier this year. I did a video where I like read all of the booktubers favorite books and I think it was on Elias's list last year and so that's why I read it and I thought that was super cute, super heartwarming. I loved the characters, loved the vibes. Under the Whispering Door did not not recreate that for me. I had high, high, high hopes. I actually pre-ordered it on Audible and it really let me down. It's about this guy named Wallace who is a lawyer and he's just a Scrooge of a person. He just lives his life thinking about money, thinking about ways that things can benefit him and he just treats people really terribly and he dies at the beginning of the book and he is whisked off to meet this ferryman named Hugo who is supposed to help him pass over to the other side through a whispering door. It's meant to be sort of a heartwarming book about death and learning about how to be a good person and it follows Wallace as he sort of discovers what he missed out on life and then there's sort of a romance between him and Hugo. I, I just really 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 feel like the plot went on for far too long. There was a lot of points where I was like for why? Why is this happening? What are we still doing here? And I considered DNFing multiple times but because I had used an audible credit on it I forced myself to finish it. Like I just was not interested. I actually started reading it and was so disinterested that I stopped and read like two other books and then I went, it was like in my Audible account and was like, oh, I need to finish that. So I kind of forced myself to finish it because I thought maybe in like the second half it would get better, but I just, I really didn't enjoy it. I really felt like it was really boring. The pacing was kind of all over the place. And I really did not enjoy the cast of characters as much as I enjoyed the ones from The House in the Cerulean Sea. I feel like The House in the Cerulean Sea just had a very like motley bunch that you really cared about and you wanted good things for. But unfortunately for me, Wallace and crew were just not cutting it. And I didn't really like the romance between him and Hugo. It felt kind of rushed. And a lot of their conversations where they like got closer and deeper were like kind of off the page. Like you don't really get to experience them firsthand. So I was kind of like, why do you like each other? I don't know. So unfortunately, this was just a really disappointing read. I, I just didn't really enjoy it. I think I gave it like two stars. And mostly it's on this list because I had high hopes and it really let me know. The next book on my list is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a book that a lot of people speak really highly of. I think it was on a lot of people's favorites of last year and it didn't do it for me. It was not it. She did not give what I thought she should give. It's about a girl named Vanessa who falls in love with her English teacher when she is a teenager and they start an inappropriate relationship that kind of spans from the time she's like 15 all the way into adulthood. 
and it follows the timeline of her in high school and what's everything that like kind of leads up to those events as well as her as an adult grappling with the fact that she was preyed upon by like a middle-aged man. And what I really found frustrating about this book was the characterization of Vanessa. Like I think everyone deals with trauma differently but I just found the adult version of Vanessa very frustrating because she was very cyclical in her thinking and her development and I understand like there's no one way to deal with trauma but like it just wasn't enjoyable to me as a reader like even if it was realistic to how people can react to these sorts of things. Another thing about this book is that it made me incredibly uncomfortable because there's a lot of really really graphic sex scenes between Vanessa and the English teacher. I just I felt really weird about it and gross and it happened like three or four times where I was like we get it he was a predator like please stop telling me about it. Hey bestie just thought I'd let you know that I I hate this all of it and I hate everything that's going on here and honestly the only reason I finished this book was just because I wanted to see what happened to the adult version of Vanessa like I wanted to see like is she gonna go to therapy how is she gonna come to terms with these things like with her realizations that like it wasn't like a normal relationship and they weren't in love and it was more like an adult using his power over her so for me this book was just a no I'm happy that other people connected to it and that they really enjoyed it and thought it was like a harrowing story of trauma but it, that's just not what it was for me the next book on my list is The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. This is a thriller about a lawyer named Sarah who gets a call from her husband at the very beginning of the book and he tells her that he's been framed for murder because he was having an affair and his mistress ended up dead in their like lake side cabin and people think he did it but he didn't so he's basically calling his lawyer wife and saying please defend me despite this betrayal that I've done to you can you please help prove that I'm innocent because I did not kill this woman. The premise of this book sounds very interesting and that is why I picked it up. Geneva Rose the author actually has a TikTok and the way that she marketed this book was she made it almost like a story time TikTok so she started the TikTok by being like I'm a lawyer and my husband just called me and said that he's been framed for murder and the way she did it was really convincing to the point where like everyone in the comments was like oh my god like this is crazy like is this real and then at the very end of the TikTok she was like just kidding that's my book. Unfortunately for me this fell very flat and I did not enjoy it at all. I think that this book is self-published which there's nothing wrong with the book being self-published. There's a lot of very good books out there that did not go through the normal gateway of you know traditional publishing. This one unfortunately is one of those ones where you're like that tracks that you're self-published like that makes sense I don't really know if you had a very good editor the writing is honestly just horrifically bad and the dialogue is super stunted like when the people are talking you're like what human would ever speak this way like this does not feel like a very natural flowing conversation it just it was not giving what I wanted her to give like I was just like the execution of this is not coming together the plot was just so convoluted and the ending made literally no sense when I got to the end, I had kind of already started to suspect what the twist was going to be. I predicted it because it was so stupid and the book was written so poorly that I was like, this is probably what's going to happen, but it makes no sense because of the way in which this book was written. I would bet a million dollars that Miss Girl, Geneva Rose, did not do a single moment of research on being a lawyer or the law because the way in which police officers and the lawyer act in this novel is just like, you don't know literally anything about the judicial and law system like I feel like you're just making things up on the spot like she just she honestly this book is a fantasy that's what I think like my expectations were like here as I thought of the plot and the execution just like it just crashed and burned and it was it was not for me do not get pulled in by the TikTok I will commend Miss Geneva Rose for her marketing skills but don't Given. The next book on my list is Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zufon. So sorry if I butchered that name. I took seven years of Spanish when I was in school, but it obviously didn't stick. This is about a boy who goes to a lost library and he checks out this book that is long since out of print and so basically he gets very enamored by both the plot and the author because something very suspicious about this book is that he has the very last copy in existence like every other book has been burned because of this he kind of embarks on a journey through most of his life trying to find out more about the author and about the book and like where how it came to be it just honestly dragged on forever for me and the only reason I finished it is because a lot of people I really respect love this book so many people are like this book made me cry this book I reread it every single year it's one of my favorites of all time like people just go on and on about this book not for me the next book on my list is Hero the Ninth by Tamsin Muir this is the second book in the Locked Tomb series right after Gideon the Ninth I don't really feel like getting into all the nuances of the plot of this series but basically it's about necromancers and spakes I don't really know why I pronounce space like that but I don't have a better take of me saying that phrase so 
Let's just pretend I didn't say it that way. The world building is flimsy at best. Like they're almost like written pretentiously where she wants you to be confused. Like she, I feel like she has a binder somewhere of like how this whole world and magic system and science system works. Like she knows everything, but she wants you as the reader to feel dumb as fuck. I had to literally look up a plot synopsis, like a point by point, like what happened in this book to fully know what I read. If I could sue an author for my time, I would sue Tamsamir. This is one of the most just infuriating books I've ever read. Like I just 0% enjoyed it. Like it, it was abysmal in my opinion. All around me are familiar faces, worn out. The final book on my list is going to upset quite a few people and I'm so, so sorry for that, but I do need to say it. And that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a beloved book by an astronomical number of people on both booktube and booktog. The amount of girlies that were like, this book changed my life. This book made me cry. It ruined my soul. Like I will think about this till my last days. Like people want to make out with Madeline Miller because she wrote this masterpiece in their eyes. I don't know if I got a bad copy or what, but this is probably one of the worst books I've ever read. And I felt so bad for feeling that way. Like this wasn't even one where I got mad that other people liked it. I got confused. Like, did I perhaps get an early transcript? Did I get one that didn't have all the heart and soul that everyone said it did? I, I don't really know what happened here, but for me, it was a hard pass. <laughs> this book is a gay romance based on Greek mythology. It follows Achilles and Patroclus. Listen, if Patroclus was my best friend and every time we hung out, he told me about his boyfriend Achilles and everything that Achilles was doing and saying, this would be one of those scenarios where I would feel like I can't be upfront with Patroclus and outright say dump him, but I would also be like mentally praying to the gods, like literally to the gods, because it's Greek mythology, that um, Patroclus and Achilles would please break up because Patroclus is such a nice, sweet, soft boy. Like honestly, the only reason I gave this book two stars was because I like Patroclus, so that extra star was for Patroclus. But he's just like, like, like the sweetest little guy who deserves everything. Thing. Achilles on the other hand is a flaming dumpster fire like I do not like him at all I think because he's a half god character he just lets being really powerful go to his head and he's just really prideful doesn't really care about other people like Patroclus is literally the only other person on this planet that he likes and so everything he does is just like super selfish I don't really understand what Patroclus saw in Achilles besides that he was hot like I get it like he's half god he's sexy um also I will I don't want to like take away from the fact they do grow up together that is part of the book as well is that um, like Patroclus has to go to the kingdom that Achilles lives in and then as boys they kind of like become best friends and Achilles is like basically his first friend and then they grow up together and fall in love so I guess I get it like I understand the deep connection they have to each other but there comes a point where it's like just because someone is your childhood love does not mean that they've evolved into a good person and it's time to move on unfortunately Patroclus does not do that in this book and if you've read the Iliad you know what happens to all of them it's not good let me know down below if you agree with any of these books. Also let me know all of your least favorite books of 2021. I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments. And yeah, again, I'm so sorry if any of these books were your favorite books. Like I feel like Song of Achilles is really gonna hurt a lot of people and I'm so sorry for that. I'm so sorry. It's just, it, it had to be said. It had to be said, I'm sorry. Thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.